Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you for uh, being here. This is uh, the House, uh, Alaska House Majority Coalition's uh, eighth press availability. And as we uh, begin our work in the second half of the session, uh, we're shaping up to have a very busy week. Uh, the House Finance Committee, as you'll hear in more detail, will be undertaking uh, the amendment process with uh, an unusually large stack of amendments uh, before them. Uh, looking back, the subcommittee process uh, went very well. And uh, at this point, we have uh, essentially all the pieces that uh, 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 we think uh, we need uh, for a comprehensive fiscal plan on the table. Um, just looking at my notes real quickly, a very busy day on the House floor yesterday. We passed three bills, uh, a bill sponsored by Representative Quito, a bill sponsored by the House Minority Leader, and a piece of legislation that uh, I introduced. And uh, so with that, I'd like to introduce the panel this morning. I'm very pleased to be joined by two members of the Finance Committee, Co-Chair Representative Seaton from Homer, Member Scott Kawasaki from Fairbanks, and uh, House Education Chair and member of the Resources Committee, Representative Drummond from Anchorage. So with that, uh, Representative Seaton, good morning. Well, good morning to everyone. And uh, you know, we've been really busy over the last <clears throat> couple of weeks here, and we really appreciate the 160 uh, Alaskans that called in and uh, public testimony on the budget that we had. We had over 15 hours of public testimony. And, uh, you know, we have fully um, uh, committed to forward funding education, and we had a lot of support for that in the calls. Um, you know, our budget is now looking at uh, about $40 million reduction from the governor's budget and $100 million reduction compared to the 2017 management plan, which is the general comparison that's made. Um, we really need to make sure that we have new revenue sources and uh, to fully develop a comprehensive plan so that we can sustain the Alaska economy. We don't want to see the economy stagnating because if it stagnates, then we lose more jobs all across the state and in the private sector. So um, we need that also because by 2019, we would be returning to the times of not fully funding a budget. And so we will move forward as quickly as we can. And as the speaker said, we have a lot of amendments, over 300 amendments uh, to the budget that we'll be considering in the next week. And so um, appreciate all the um, effort that people are taking. And uh, that's what we're doing in house finance. Representative Kawasaki. Thanks. Just wanted to speak briefly about the process. You know, I know there's a lot of uh, criticism that we had. My my mom was watching the uh, finance committee the, the other day and said, in fact, that uh, those guys sure seem whiny. And and I said, you know, you know, I, I recognize that the minority, the new minority, the Republicans in the House um, may seem that way, but. You know, it's not about that. You know, we've got 321 amendments uh, facing the Finance Committee now in the next day or so. And I just want to say that Representative Seaton, as the new chairman of the Finance Committee, has really done an, a great job to uh, really open up the dialogue, make it a lot more transparent. As a member of the Finance Committee and as press corps who have been here for a while, you guys recognize the fact that, that oftentimes you would have a committee substitute dropped on your laps an hour before hearings. Um, you know, we've had meetings that, that had gone on at 7 o'clock at night or 7 o'clock in the morning. And uh, rather than doing that, uh, Representative Seaton, as chairman of this new committee, has really done an outstanding job of making sure it's transparent, it's open, it's in the public light, that every amendment got to be voted on, uh, whether they supported it or not. So I, I, I told my mom that, uh, you know, it's, it's not that they, they may be whiny or not, it's, it's that they, they, it's a different process this, day, this time. And it's an open, it's a transparent process, it's a process that uh, this caucus moving forward believes in. Um, and we are going to dispatch the 321 amendments that uh, this, this caucus uh, and this uh, legislature has received. Um, in due and regular order uh, in the light of day uh, with the public process um, and with the process outlined by the chairman. So I just, uh, again, need to, need to talk about the process, need to thank the representative because, again, as being a member of the minority in the past, oftentimes we had no public process and it was dropped into our laps in the last minute. So I just wanted to say that and on the record. Representative Drummond. 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, I'm pleased to be part of the coalition that is united in uh, supporting public education from knee-jerk reactions that will jeopardize the educational future of our children and young adults. The Senate majority is proposing a 5% cut to the base student allocation, which would take around $75 million away from classroom instruction. At the status quo, Anchorage will lose 99 teachers. Um, uh, hundreds more, I'm sure, are, are in, uh, hundreds more jobs are in danger around the state, and larger class sizes um, is the only response to that. Um, our budget restores the $6.4 million proposed cut to pupil transportation that was included in the governor's budget. Um, it keeps in place funding for early childhood programs. We all know that children in high quality pre-K programs save taxpayers at least $7 in the future for every $1 invested at the age of four and five. So with that, uh, we'll open things up for questions. Are there any questions this morning? Steve? Um, Steve Quinn with Bloomberg. Um, the first question, and I'll have a follow-up, is uh, what do you make of the 321 amendments? <laughs> well, let's see. Largest number of amendments most people have ever... Nobody can remember that many amendments, but, but there is some... Um, some give and take with that because we have a new amendment process which means that every allocation has to have a separate amendment so some of those would have been combined in last uh in the old amendment process it's much more transparent uh the new amendment electronic uh, system but it does have some glitches so those aren't directly comparable though though there's a lot of them so um, Representative Seaton's um, being uh, really kind, I think. Um, <laughs> we, we, uh, we've, in the minority in the past, we've offered amendments and we've said these are the priorities that we believe in, these are the things that we would like to see in the budget, these are the things that we'd like to see outside of the budget. There, if you combine them, the total is still uh, almost, almost 200, 190 amendments total. Um, I'm not going to say that, that the Republican minority wants to disrupt the process, but I will say that uh, you know, in a 90-day session with 190 amendments that weren't vetted through the subcommittee, that uh, weren't discussed at any other point in time, that, that 191 amendments will cause us problems. Uh, you know, I think that this caucus is here to serve. We want to be out of here within the 90-day session as required by the voters of the state. And currently, um, they've uh, decided to put, put this on our table. So we will, again, dispatch them in the right manner. We will uh, listen to each amendment, and, uh, and we'll vote them up and down uh, as the situation provides. Well, I think the other comment to add to that as well is that, uh, you know, our philosophy is that we're going to approach things on a merit-based uh, merit standpoint. And uh, so every amendment up there will be considered, will be, will be given the opportunity to be heard and to be um, brought before the committee. Uh, a bit of irony in the fact that there's well over 300 amendments. And I've, I've worked in the building uh, in the 90s and, uh, and uh, been a legislator now for 10 plus years. I've never seen that amount, a number of amendments come before a finance committee. Perhaps uh, there has been a time uh, when there's been that uh, big of a number. But uh, the fact is that uh, uh, a lot of those amendments um, are, are going to require uh, uh, time and money uh, to be uh, heard because it involves our, uh, our, our uh, legislative legal drafters uh, to draft the amendments. Uh, certainly it involves the committee's time. Um, there's an issue about getting the operating budget on the floor as it normally arrives around the middle of March. And uh, so we're, we're talking possibly additional time to consider those amendments. Um, and uh, so all that factors into the, the bigger picture. And uh, I guess I would just close and uh, uh, allow the Finance Committee members, if they wanted a, a second comment, uh, but just to say that uh, uh, it's going to go through the, the due process that any other amendment, uh, majority or otherwise, would uh, have the opportunity to be heard. Um, my other question is, I think somebody mentioned that the, um, your plan helps the economy. Can you uh, elaborate on that? Representative C. 
Sure. Um, I think everybody should recognize, you know, we've had presentations from like Northern Economics and other people assessing the economy and how our budget impacts that. And what we've seen is if we were looking at uh, the $900 million deficit coming as cuts, then what happens is that you lose about 25,000 jo more jobs and a recession will last an additional 10 years. So uh, is that what we want? That's not what our coalition wants. So our coalition wants to make sure we have a comprehensive plan that fixes the solution and doesn't rely on massive budget cuts, which are going to uh, influence the private economy and create further job layoffs. So that, that's what our goal is, is to have a thriving economy that's supported by you know the four pillars of our plan, which includes all of the things that are on the table, but we need some additional revenues instead of just massive budget cuts. Good morning, uh, Nat Hurst with Alaska Dispatch News. Um, I'm wondering, big picture, uh, we're, we're at roughly day 50, I don't know if that's quite right, but um, you know, the Finance Committee is still sort of right in the middle of the budget, um, you've got, you're now gonna have to deal with these amendments. Um, it seems pretty clear that the budget is going to be a smaller fraction of, of you know, closing the, the budget deficit than say, you know, per using permanent fund earnings or other sources of new revenue. Does the process that you guys are using make sense if you're spending more than half the time sort of totally dedicated to the budget or, or almost totally dedicated to the budget? And I might just answer that, you know, this is the normal time frame it takes to consider a budget. I mean, some people say, just get done with, you know, just make billion dollar decisions quickly and, and not thoughtfully. And th that's not our perspective. We want to go through everything thoughtfully, have full consideration by all members, have everything voted on. Uh, so. You know, our normal time frame that we uh, negotiated with the Senate, would we would be getting the budget out of House Finance on Friday. With this number of amendments, uh, that's always been, you know, conditional upon how many minority amendments we had. And so, um, you know, I'm anticipating uh, going through the weekend and, and who, who knows how long those, all of those amendments will take. But if each one needs to be voted on, and goes forward, then it's going to take time. We're not going to be going till two or three in the morning. And, uh, you know, people don't start making good decisions when they're extra tired. So <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll um, continue along with the process and uh, the time frame will just have to slip with the, you know, if we have too many amendments. And I, I guess I might add that, uh, um, to do our best to keep us on track. Uh, we may be looking at uh, weekend uh, force schedules in the House. So um, well, we're gonna keep an eye on that. Again, as Representative Seaton alluded, we don't know when uh, the budget bill is gonna come out of House Finance, but if it comes out uh, in such a manner, we will be having floor sessions on Saturday and Sunday. Uh, yeah, I guess, I'm just wondering, I mean, if, if you guys could articulate sort of, if. If the budget isn't going to change very much through this process, which you know I recognize that there's been a pretty substantial uh, reduction in the um, debt reimbursement, but other than that, 